120 miles west of Del Rio in the rugged terrain of West Texas, where the fight against illegal immigration and human smuggling is very real. Tonight, our Yami Virheen investigates in Terrell County, uncovering the limited resources local law enforcement has to do the job with no end in sight. On this side where we're standing, it's Terrell County, Texas, the U.S. side of the border. Just behind me, that is Coahuila, Mexico, and many cross here under the cover of night. This time of year, the hues along the roads and hills of West Texas are pinks and lilacs, as the Ceniso grows peacefully under the Texas sun. We're a small community of about 700 people. The county's the 10th largest county in the state, over 2,400 square miles, and I have three deputies and myself, so four of us total to, uh, to patrol. We've had more activity than we've ever had before. You know, we don't have a, a crime problem out in Terrell County. What we have is a, a border security problem. We arrived in Sanderson, the county seat of Terrell County, population just over 700 on a full moon. Cleveland tells us he and his team rely heavily on partnerships with federal agents from the Sanderson Border Patrol Station. Last fiscal year, we took over 100 um, vehicles off the highway. We're now in the full moon cycle with the smuggler moon. We're going to see it as a significant increase in the activities. The Sanderson Border Patrol station stretched thin. They have 91 miles of border to cover with only about 50 agents. On any given shift, that number drops, making it even harder to cover this large district. When 911 calls come in from migrants left behind by coyotes, lost, hurt, and sometimes dying, law enforcement struggles to respond quickly and find them in the brush. These men were found separately, all lucky enough to be found alive after calling 911. Right now we're traveling just west of Sanderson. Uh, Border Patrol has a, a group spotted on camera, night vision camera, and uh, it was actually detected earlier in the day with the, uh, the CBP UAS, unmar Unmanned Aerial System, the, C the uh, CBP Predator, um, just like the ones they use in the military. Fiesta. Tonight, as we ride with Sheriff Cleveland, his men and Border Patrol, they find what they're looking for with the help of technology. A group of nine migrants, all from Guatemala. No hay trabajos. No hay trabajo, hay trabajo pero... No paga. Si no paga bien. The youngest is 19 and was heading to Missouri to live with his sisters. Border Patrol will process them, and it remains to be seen if they will be released or expelled from the country. In the morning, Sheriff Cleveland, who's a Sanderson native, takes us to the coffee shop on Highway 90 before we head out. Yes, it's the only one. The Ferguson Motor Cafe is owned by a couple originally from San Antonio. Honestly, directly, um, no, we, we don't see much effect from it. We see a lot of uh, the people coming to work the border, you know, there's the big border patrol station here, DPS, Texas Rangers, National Guard. Um, those guys come out in waves to assist the border patrol. Jake Harper and his wife moved here with their three children. He tells us that border security, it's what's keeping Sanderson alive. Business wise, we see the effect of it. We see a lot of those guys coming through. You know, they need somewhere to meet up. They need somewhere to eat. You know, here it it feels relatively quiet. I hear stories from ranchers and people who live right on the, the river, you know, and they tell different stories, you know, immigrants coming through or, you know, things like that. But we don't see very much of it at all. Unlike El Paso and Eagle Pass, which makes headlines, 
Terrell County's situation is a bit different, at least on the surface. Does it not seem strange to you that we keep talking so much about border security, but yet we don't have enough people that it takes you 40 minutes to get to this point of the border to check somebody's home that was broken into. It does take additional resources and uh, and a lot of times to get to your specific questions, you know, our, our landowners are, are left waiting. The hardest thing it was for me, whether I was the Border Patrol agent, Patrol agent charge or the sheriff is to tell somebody, I don't have anybody to send right now, you'll have to wait. We visited a ranch belonging to a retired Air Force Colonel. It took us 45 minutes to reach the house on top of the hill overlooking the Rio Grande. If a migrant gets lost here, it may take days to find them. And down below, it's an easier point to cross because as you can see, I'm on the U.S. side of the border and right across from me, where the boulders are, is Mexico. Here, cows, goats, or cabritos roam freely across the border. What we rely on, obviously, is our partnerships, whether it's you know with the local, the state, the border patrol, our landowners, or a lot of times our eyes and ears. Harper says the surprising thing is how safe his family feels here, despite what national news reports every day. You know, we honestly feel very safe here. I mean, it, I had to put it, I guess, bluntly, I feel safer here than I did in the city. In Terrell County, Texas, I'm Jamie Virgin reporting.